This is MathGuide.com, and my name is Mark Karadimos. In this video, there's going to be two sections. We're going to find the sum of an arithmetic series given two different scenarios. Scenario 1, we'll know the first term and the last term. Scenario 2, we'll know the first term and the number of terms. All right, let's get started. So this is going to be scenario number 1. Let's take a look at a series. So let's say we had this series. Uh, 1, 5, 9, dot, dot, dot. And our last term is 65. So here we've got the series, and we want to figure out what is its sum. Okay, so usually the sum is written as a S, N. It's written like that. So there is a formula. So the formula is, well, let's see, the sum says that we take the number of terms, we multiply it by the first term. It's actually we're going to multiply it by the sum of the first term and the last term, and we divide it by 2. Sometimes people like to say you take the average of the first and second number. Remember, you, take, you add and divide it by 2, and then you take that average times the number of terms. So this is great. We have the first term. Here's a1. We've got the last term, a n, but we don't have the number of terms. Okay, we don't know how many terms there are in this series, and we need that value to calculate the sum. So that's our job. Our job is to first figure out what n is so we could use this formula. So this goes back to the beginning of learning about arithmetic sequences. Uh, a sequence is just commas. We separate these values with commas. So we want to figure out what is this term number, right? This is term 1, term 2, term 3, and so on. We want to figure out what term number is this. All right, so the generic formula is always going to be the common difference times n plus some constant. So once we know the formula that will generate the values in our series, we could use this to find the n value. All right, well, let's start with the common difference. Let's figure out what's the common difference between these values. So if I take 1, subtract negative 3, I am going to get 4. Okay, so it looks like we're adding 4. Right? If I add 4 to 1, I get 5. I add 4 to 5, I get 9. So there's our common difference. All right, that's great. So what we're going to do in our formula, we're going, we're going to put in that common difference. We're also going to figure out what the first number is, right? The first value, a of 1, where in other words, replacing the n with 1. So I'm going to replace the n with 1 in the formula. We don't know what the common or this uh, constant is. Uh, but we do know what the first term is. The first term is negative 3. So we're going to say that, well, we know what a1 is. a1 is negative 3. So we're going to use this equation to now calculate the constant, as we've done in other videos. So let's see, we got 4 plus some number is negative 3. And it looks like if I subtract 4 from both sides, I'm going to get negative 7. All right, so our, now our specific formula is known. It's our d value times n and then our constant, negative 7. All right, so this is the formula we would use then to generate the sequence. Well, our series in this case. Well, we have our series. We just want to figure out what term this is. So we're going to set that equal to 65. I need a little bit more room, so I'm going to go over here. So I'm going to go, let's see, a and n, uh, 4 times n minus 7 is equal to 65. All right, so we're going to add 7 to both sides. And I'm going to get 72. And then we're going to divide by 4. And I believe this is 18. Yep. A little mental check. Yep, that is 18. All right, now we know that that is our 18th term. 65 is our 18th term. So now we can plug all our values into the formula. All right, so now we really know that we're going to find the sum of the first 18 terms because n is 18. So I'm replacing the n with 18. I'm replacing the first value with negative 3. I'm replacing our a of n, a of 18, with 65. Divide this all by 2. 
So if you throw this into a calculator and actually do the mathematics, 558. And there you go. So there you go. There's the sum of this series. So let's take a look at another example, which is our second scenario. Here's our second series. Let's say we start out with 4, 13, 22. And let's say we know that for this particular series, we know that there's 73 terms. All right, so this would be, of course, our given information. And we're going to use this, of course, to find the sum. We want to figure out what's the sum. Now, you know, if it was just a few terms, you know, we could calculate the common difference, right? Like we're going to still have to do anyway. So 13 minus 4 is 9. 22 minus 13 is 9. And so on, right? So we could see our common difference is 9. We could just keep on, take 4, add 9, get 13, add those two add 9, get 22, add the, the sum, the ongoing sum with 22, and add the ongoing sum with the next, and, and keep on adding more and more numbers. But this is going to take forever, right? Especially if someone were to say, let's add the first 1,026 terms. You know, it, it takes too long. So there's a formula we could use to actually calculate this. But here's the formula. Now, the way some people remember this is you take the average of your first term and your last term, right? If you take the average, that means you add them and divide by two. If you take this average and multiply it by the number of terms, then that's how you get the sum. So we need to know three things. How many terms there are? Hey, we got 73 terms. First term, we got the first terms, four. We need the last term. Oh, we don't know. What is the 73rd term? All right, well, the good news is we can do this. We actually could calculate what that is and then you use it in the formula. So let's go back to our generic term. So the generic term is always going to be the common difference times n plus some constant. So if we know what this constant is, we would know the formula. We could use the formula to get the last number. All right, well, let's go and take a look and, and plug in what we know. We know the d value is nine. We know for our first term, that's a1, our first term, that's, that means the n is 1. We're going to replace the n with 1. We know what a1 is equal to. We know a1 is equal to 4. So we go, all right, let's use this equation to get our constant. So 9, 9 times 1 is 9. Uh, let's see. Hmm, 9 plus what is 4? That's got to be a negative number. So we subtract 9, we get negative 5. All right, so we know that now our generic term is known, or, or at least the formula, in this case it's a function we're going to use to, dis it has to be a function, to find our terms is going to be 9, 9n. And we've got a negative 5 here. Because the negative 5 is the constant. All right, we're going to use this now to figure out what the 73rd term is. Uh, when you see the 73, the term, that is n, right? n means there's 73 terms. We need to know what that 73rd term is. So we now use this formula. We're going to find the 73rd term. So we put 73 in for n. We say, all right, let's figure out what this value is. So we get 657 when we multiply. I guess you'll have to trust me or verify it with a calculator. Subtract and we get 652. All right, so now we know the 73rd term is 652. So let's use this now for our last number. That's A of n. So we throw this all into a calculator now to find the sum of the first 73 numbers. n is 73. Our first term is 4. Our last term we just found is 652. And we now divide this all by 2. You crank this out with a calculator. And the answer is, I'm going to spare you the work, but the answer is going to be 23,944. 
And there you have it. It looks like we now have the sum. We have the sum of the first 73 terms. All right, that's all there is to this. So go back to mathguide.com. Check out our text-based lessons, our interactive quizzes, and instructional videos. Take care.